Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to use the free GIMP image editing program to create a nice layer mask here using their pen tool for a real nice smooth curve like that, and then use that over in Photoshop Elements to replace the background. There we go. Make sure you click on that like button, and also don't forget to share as well. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click on subscribe also. Now to learn a lot more about using Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course and you'll find a link right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We're going to start this video off over in GIMP. Let's just first close this down. This is our finished picture, and by the way, that is not a cigar. That is a cinnamon stick, in case you're curious. Great thing to have cinnamon stick with hot chocolate. Let's just go ahead and close that down. Here we go, and I'll start off with a completely brand new file, and here we just close this down and open up a brand new file. Just close that. Discard the changes. Okay, now GIP works differently than Photoshop Elements does. It's a very powerful editing program and it's completely free. You can get it online at GIMP.org. Let me just bring that up. There we go. GIMP and it's at GIMP.org. Free download. It's been around for a long time. It's a very, very stable program. No cost to this program at all. So it's a great program to use for a lot of stuff. Personally, I prefer Photoshop and Photoshop Elements on the way that just they're laid out. But there are a lot of tools in GIMP that you can use to improve how Photoshop Elements runs. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Now, as you can see here, it does run a bit differently. These are floating windows. There's our image window, which has all of the menus in the image window. If you open up two images, you'll have two floating image windows. Toolbar is floating over here. And, of course, the panels on the right-hand side are also floating. Now, if you want it to look more like a regular program, just take this window here and let's just stretch this out and fit it in the background just like that. Now it feels a bit more like a regular program. Now part of the problem here is that the toolbar can only go so small so you have to kind of put it underneath your other menu up here. Same thing for the layers, but that's not really that big of a deal. Okay, let's open up our image, file, and open. And there we go, there's our open file, or open image dialog box. And you can see here that the program works by showing you thumbnails on the right-hand side, and here's your actual images. That's what I want, it's just a JPEG image. Now, if you want to work along with this video, I have this downloadable on the materials page, the download page for this video. Okay, let's go ahead and choose Open. And there it is. Now. Have all of our standard tools over here, left hand side. If you don't like this floating tool bit, you can run the program in what they call single window mode. Go up to Windows and come down here, single window mode. And it just kind of docks things in there on the side. Now we have our controls over here. You can move things around with these you know, slider controls. And obviously it's resized a bit. So let me just resize this to fit my record area here on my window that over there and let's stretch this out like that. There we go. Now we're seeing our whole image again. And this time the tools are docked over here on the left hand side. So you have this way of working as well. So there's two different ways of working here with GIMP. Personally I prefer the non-single window mode which again is just like this. And let's get this thing back to center again. There we go. And I'll bring my tools back in over here on the left. Okay so here's our hot chocolate cup with that cinnamon stick in there and we'll be making a selection. The reason why I'm doing this over here in GIP is this curve right in there and this curve here and this curve up in here. Doing curve selections inside of elements is almost impossible. You can do real small dots using the one of these selection tools, maybe the polygonal lasso tool and just do a whole bunch of little dots around here and get a pretty good curve on that but it takes a long time and it's difficult to adjust with a pen tool or a pen style or vector tool, you can actually make a curve, an actual curve, and then easily modify or adjust that curve. And we can do that right here inside of GIMP. Once you have the path made with your pen tool, you can then convert that path into your selection and then use that selection to create a layer mask. Okay, let's go over here to the left-hand side. We have a tool right there. 
This is the path tool, and they call it the paths tool with an S in there. Same thing basically as a pen tool over in Photoshop. Right below that is the zoom tool, and we'll be using both of these tools here. To do a good path, you want to be zoomed in fairly close, and I found here it's easiest if we zoom in first and make our path after we're zoomed in. Let's just click a couple of times here. There we go, so you can get nice and close in here. We'll then go up here to the paths tool. Now with the paths tool, you click and it creates a path. This is just like making a selection using the polygonal lasso tool. I'm just making points and then give us connecting those dots with straight lines. That's not what we want. So I'll go over here to the layers, right here, little layers panel, little three dots. This is the path right there. This is our paths. There's your layers. We have color separations right here, your color channels, and there's paths. I'm just going to right click on this and let's delete that path and start over again. The other way to work with a path is you click and drag and that gives you a curve. I'll start right here in that corner and I'll click and drag it just a little bit. That gives me a curve. I can knock them down here somewhere, click and drag, and I get a curve. Get these little control handles in there. Those allow me to control the curve and that's where this is useful to do this kind of a selection. Now if you hold the space bar down, the hand changes. You don't have to hold any buttons down or anything. It's just locked into a move tool like this. So space bar up, you can put where you want, space bar down, it locks it into a move tool. So let's pull it up here and I'll do a new point right here. Again, pull out and that gives me a curve. Sometimes it gives a backwards curve. For whatever reason, Photoshop does the same thing. Not all the time, but sometimes. Just click and pull your curves out, come down a ways, find your edge, click and pull our curve out again. Back to the shift tool, make that move, and we'll just go around making these curves. Now the nice thing about a path is that you can come back and you can adjust it afterwards. That's one of the real power here of working with a path. First one is, of course, that you get curves, nice smooth curves. The second one is that you can adjust it after you've made it. We'll come back and we'll fix all of that here. So I'm just working my way around. Now when you're working with a basically curved object like this and you come to a corner, just click and drag at that corner as well. Just consider that corner as being a curve. And we'll adjust that. Little dots for small curves. Here's our space bar again. Again, click into the corner here and up a little bit and click here. I'm going to do three little ones for the top and come down here, a little click there. And I can do one over here and one in that corner right there. And then come back to spacing them out a little bit further for around the rim of the cup. Now I'm just putting them basically in place. I'm not worrying about being exact at this point because we can modify this. Here's our space bar again. And let's work our way around. Just like that. And we come back around. And then we'll finish up with one more right down there just next to that point. Now in GIMP, it doesn't automatically connect or close your path you click on the first point, kind of like Photoshop does. Just click on next to that. It will fill in that little gap for you automatically. Okay, so there's our basic path in here. It's a little bit squirrely, as you can see up there, but that's okay. We can fix all of that. On the right-hand side over here, here is the layers. And notice that we're not seeing the path on layers. It's separate from the layers. And then here is our path right here. If you right-click on the name, we have all of our path tools. Edit path, edit path attributes. Make a new path, duplicate the path, delete the path, and importantly down here, path to selection, add to selection, subtract from selection, so forth. This is your selection stuff in there, and the selection is what we'll be using to create our layer mask in just a bit. We'll go back here to edit path. Edit path brings you back to this point. Now click on any of these dots. See how it goes clear, and we get these two square handles out there. At this point, I can move this one around get a place just where I want it, and then I can pull these handles in to smooth down the curve and get my curve just exactly right. Just a matter now of going around and adjusting all of these until we get a nice clean curve. You can make these shorter or longer, and you can move them in or out. And looks like that's pretty, pretty good in there. It's a little bit weird right here. I'll pull this up 
just a touch and then pull this down. Now it'll take me a few minutes to really clean this path up. In this part you don't need to watch, I'll come back to that in a minute. But let's move over here and down to this section here. Let's take this one. Now it's kind of a weird curvy line here. I'm just going to take this handle here and just put it right on top of that. And that gives me basically a straight line there. And here I'm going to pull this right down on top of that one. So there's a straight line there. And then of course just move this as I need to. And then down here I have my path handle right there and pull that out. So if I want a corner in here and I'm working with a curved surface, all I need to do is click on that corner and then pull this control handle straight in to give me a nice straight line there. And up here, okay, I want a straight line on that side and then a curve up around over here. And I can just kind of move these things around until I get it exactly where I want it and get a nice smooth, even path on that. And that's looking pretty good. Same thing down here. I'm going to pull both of these in right on top of that main path handle. Notice how these move independently of each other. So I can move one and then move another. Okay, the rest of this is pretty straightforward. Just what I've been showing you here. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second. I'll finish going around the edge and fine-tuning these control handles as I go to get the path exactly the way I want it. As soon as that's done, I'll then bring the video back up and I'll move on to the next step. And there we go. Nice path, nice smooth curves around this very curvy picture. Okay, so now right click on the path and come down to Add to Selection. And it gives us a, a selection right there, right along the path. We can now go back to our layers. There's our selection. And with the layers, you can right click and add layer mask based on the selection. Lots of options in here. We'll do based on selection. Choose add. There we go. There's our layer mask. We now can deselect that. Go up here to select. Come down to none. That's deselected. And let's go up here to path. We can show our hide our path right there as well. So when this is saved out, we're not going to be seeing this path. The path will not be saved for Photoshop Elements. But the selection and the layer mask will be saved, so we'll have that all taken care of. Okay, let's so go ahead now and transfer this out to Adobe's Photoshop Elements. Go up to File, come down to Export As right here, and where it says Select File Type at the bottom of this window, click on that. We can then scroll down. You can save to lots of different file formats here out of the GIMP program. And the important one right down here is Photoshop Image. Just choose that. Here's our name. I'm going to just call this one, get rid of all these numbers here, I'll call this one Cappuccino Cup, although I like calling it hot chocolate. There we go. Cappuccino Cup. Choose Export. And it's now saved out as a Photoshop file. At this point, we can switch over to the Photoshop Elements program. And there we go. There's Photoshop Elements. Let's go ahead now and open up that file. File Open. And there it is right there. Choose Open. And as you can see, here is our nice coffee cup image with that layer mask already installed, giving us that nice clean background. So that's how you can use the GIMP program to remove the background from a tricky picture like this that has these curved edges which are really very very difficult to handle inside of Photoshop Elements. And of course the best part is that the GIMP program is completely free. Let's say I want to put a different background in here. Just takes just a couple of steps. I'll make a new layer over here. Pull this layer underneath our coffee mug layer. On this layer, rename this layer background. Let's go up here to Layer, come down to New, and choose Background from Layer. It's now a background layer. It fills with your background color. Once that's done, we can now use our backgrounds here inside of Elements to change this background to anything we want. They're done under Graphics. Here we go. And I'm going to scroll way down quite a ways. I hit kind of a nice satin down here, kind of a nice satin tablecloth look. We'll just keep on scrolling down for that. Way, way, way down, as you can see. Long ways down here. 
Just keep on scrolling down, you'll eventually come to it. Almost there. Not quite. Just about, and there we go, almost to the bottom. Click on that. That then brings that in as the background layer. Okay, let's go back over to layers again. And back up here. Now it's not perfect because we don't have a shadow down here, a drop shadow. Let me show you an easy way to do that drop shadow. It'll take a little bit of cleanup, but it isn't that big of a deal. The first thing I want to do is I want to make a copy of this layer. There we go. Now go back down to the original layer here. Right click on this layer and choose Simplify Layer. That merges the layer mask with the image, giving us just a clean background. If I hide everything in here, there we go. It's just the coffee cup on clear. There's our background. Now we can add a layer style onto this coffee cup. Go up to Layer, come down to Layer Style and Style Settings. Drop Shadow right here. Now notice the shadowing of the cup right there. So the light source is up over here someplace, up that direction. So let's go to our lighting angle and move the lighting angle around to match. So it's kind of aiming at where that light source is based upon that shadow. If I pull the distance out, you can see there's that drop shadow right down there. We'll pull it out just a little ways. Opacity is at 35, which is nice. just kind of a nice soft one. And increase the size a little bit. That makes the edge just a bit softer on that drop shadow. There it is. Just kind of softens that down. And choose OK. Now there's a problem with that. And that's that we have a shadow over here and a shadow up here and a shadow right in there. I don't want any of those shadows because that looks like it's a cut after sitting on the, on the background. I want just a shadow just down here, but none of this stuff. So now we can use our layer mask up here to help us clean out that edge. But first, we'll have to, again, simplify this layer right here. So right-click on the layer name, click Simplify, and it gets rid of that layer style. So now the shadow is part of the actual picture over here. Now go up to the layer mask, hold on the Alt key and pull straight down. That copies that layer mask down here. Notice how the shadowing just disappeared. That's because it's hidden by this layer mask. We can now bring it in again by adjusting our layer mask. Double click on the layer mask side. Make sure you see that light blue outline around there. Notice that white is showing our coffee mug and black is hiding the shadow. So we want to paint in white to see more of the shadow. Go over to the paintbrush. Make sure your foreground color is set at white. And then grabbing anything out of a 36 here, hard edge, that's fine. And if I paint right in here, I'm just extending out that layer mask a little bit with the white and showing that shadow. That's right around the edge. Just go clear up here to the edge. And that gives us that nice shadow right around there. And right up here, I just kind of want to fade this out in there. So to do that, let's get a soft edge. Paintbrush 21 looks pretty good. A little small, actually. Let's go up here to maybe a bit larger. And I'll zoom in on this. It's a little bit tricky, so I need to pull it in here. We may catch the edge of that. I want to get the shadow in here before I catch that shadow up there. So again, back to our brush. And the size looks pretty good. It's a soft edge, a little larger maybe. The larger the size, the softer the edge. And starting right here, just kind of pull that in like that. There we go. And that just brings that shadow in before we hit the shadow up here that's being hidden by that layer mask. And back to fit screen. And then final trick in here. Let's go on to our cup layer right there. Let's do a layer adjustment layer here, layer adjustment layer, and levels. And choose use previous layer. Click on OK. We now can use this to adjust the levels in here of the coffee cup and get our colors looking a bit nicer, a little bit stronger colors, but more contrasty in there, bring our whites up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So there we go. We use the GIMP program to create our layer mask to do, they're using their pen tool to give us that nice curved edge, which we use to create our layer mask. And then by saving that out as Photoshop file over there in GIMP, we can then open it up over here in Photoshop Elements and do the rest of the work over here inside of Elements with all the rest of our great tools. So there you go, that's how you can use GIMP to add in additional capabilities over here for Photoshop Elements. If you like this video, make sure that you click that like button and also, of course, share through social media. 
And finally, don't forget to take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and there's a link right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.